Nigeria has lost $100 billion to the Northeast conflict, says UNICEF. However, it's obvious that the full human cost of the war is much greater. The conflict, which became fierce since the early 2000s, with Islamic insurgents in Boko Haram and the Islamic State of West African province, has spawned one of the world's worst humanitarian crises, with millions of people dependent on aid and no one knows when it will all end. This is our first hot topic this morning on The Breakfast. Our second hot topic will take a look at thrombosis and means of prevention. I can almost hear you say throm what? Yeah, thrombosis. Stick with us to the end of the program uh, when we get to our second segment and find out exactly what thrombosis is all about. That's our second hot topic this morning. We'll also be taking a look at the front pages of some national head, head newspapers to find out the headlines that made it to the front pages of those national dailies. I am Maureen Menon Wezigui. Good morning to you. It's so good to have you join us this beautiful Friday morning. How are you doing? So finally, the much expected judgment came about on Wednesday and uh, mixed feelings naturally have trailed it. Uh, the all progressive ruling Congress, they are excited. They believe that they have indeed fought a good fight as the court upheld their victory. The APC uh, are excited. Well, the PDP, not excited at all. And they describe it through their presidential um, candidate, uh, former uh, Vice President Atiku Abubakar, that it was a miscarriage of judgment. They are very displeased. The Labour Party, through their own presidential candidate, Peter Ruby, have also said it is short of expectations and they are going to appeal it. And they're saying that the Supreme Court has a responsibility to have the final say on that. What say you, Nigeria? What say you? It's been an interesting week, no doubt. Um, even the Vice President, uh, Kashim Shatima, has said he's going to retire former Vice President Abuka, Abubakar Tiku uh, to uh, breeding of local domestic animals. It's been quite an interesting event. The week um, which we're all looking forward to seeing. We've seen it finally. All eyes on the judiciary. Well, it has come and gone. It's a Friday and we're all excited that uh, the week is uh, winding down so that we can rest from all the work that we have had to do during the course of the week. Well, presently, President Bola Tinubu is in India where he has gone for the G20 summit, uh, which should take place uh, between the 9th and 10th of this month. And he went with, you know, he traveled with... Uh, the country's private sector leaders. Uh, we saw that list, and you know, when I saw that list, I thought, oh, wow, this is quite strategic. Uh, well then, uh, the APC, as I said, they are very excited about this judgment, and they are saying that uh, the Labour Party and the PDP should accept it and, uh, and join them to move the country forward. But they are saying, no, this ain't over. We're taking this matter up. We're going to appeal this judgment. Of course, we all expected it. There's no, we knew that it's not going to end this month. <laughs> They're going to push it forward. But then, would there be a change at the Supreme Court? Would they not work with the result of this court that uh, uh, has just ruled on Wednesday? We don't know. We'll just keep our fingers crossed and continue to watch uh, the politicians do their thing. Um, indeed, it has been a very, 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 very crucial uh, period in our history as a people. INEC um, has remained um, a body that Nigerians are very, very critical about. Um, they're very um, critical about because of the critical role that INEC plays and should be playing in moving this country forward. Have they played their role effectively? 
have they compromised? These are some of the questions that we keep asking. And well, the court has ruled that INEC is not uh, mandated to use the electronic means of transmitting the results, even though it was one of the reasons why many people actually went out to vote in February. But then uh, the courts have ruled, the court has ruled, the judges have decided. It's the Friday Flex edition of The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. I am Maureen Menongwe Ziguan. It's so good to have you stay with us this morning. Let's take a break now. We'll come back. Um, oh, let's not forget, we have top trending to give you. We have the first and second top trending. I was just going to say, let's go to the front pages of the newspapers, but I almost uh, forgot that we have the top trending for you. So let's go straight to the top trending. The first top trending, students give Unilag management 48 hours to reverse tuition fee hike. Well, the students, the University of Lagos, under the ages of student solidarity group against fee hike, have given the university management 48 hours to reverse the increment in students' tuition fees. In a statement signed by one of the leaders of the coalition, Femi Adeye, on Thursday, the union threatened to embark on a massive protest if the management failed to meet the demand within the time given. The student leaders at the university met with the school authorities over the increment in July, but the management refused to shift its ground on the matter. This led to a protest by the student leaders in Lagos on Wednesday, during which police personnel shot at them. Well, at that time, the police disrupted a peaceful protest and arrested some of the protesters, including an activist, Philip Olatimo. The group have now declared that intimidation and harassment they faced during Wednesday's protest from police would not distract and deter them from pursuing their demands against the injustice meted out to their fellow students by the Unilag management. They described the protest against fee hike and underfunding of education as a powerful display of class consciousness and collective action, while claiming it was a direct confrontation rejecting the non-liberal siege on public education. That's how they describe it. They also called out the Professor Ogunshola-led management of the University of Lagos for resorting to what they classified as a deployment of armed police officers who shot canisters of tear gas to disrupt the peaceful student protest, leading to the illegal arrest of some of their associates, including Adeyeye, Oloran Femi, Olatimo Philip, Aduo Adjodile, Giwa, Yisa, Temitokbe, and others. Well, the group went further to explain that the arrests were intended to stifle their voices, instill fear, and deter their peaceful demonstration, but consider uh, it to have failed woefully. Well, moving from that first top trending, we'll go to our second top trending. The president, Tinubu, has secured $3 billion investment for Nigeria steel industry. Uh, um, that uh, President Bola Tinubu, who went to India for the G20 summit. And uh, well, the, that investment is to boost the steel industry in Nigeria. It is a good thing. Um, this has been revealed in a statement by the Special Assistant Media and Publicity, Mr. Abdullahi Haruna, to the Minister of Steel. Uh, the de de development Prince Jaib Audu in Abuja on Wednesday. The president made the commitment during the Nigeria India Economic Roundtable in India. The pledge to make the $3 billion investment in iron ore processing and steel development in Nigeria was made by Jindal Steel and Power Limited, one of India's foremost private steel producers. The pledge was described as a result of extensive discussion, discussions between President Tinubu and the leadership of Jindal Steel and Power Limited on the sidelines of the G20 summit in New Delhi, India. Well, Audi has expressed his jubilation at the development, adding that the pledge was a game changer that would revitalize and transform the nation's steel industry and appreciated the president for his exceptional efforts in this 
development. Nigerians are having questions about it. Some are very excited and, and saying kudos to the president. And some are saying, well, until we begin to see a change, <laughs> until we begin to see it reflect on the Ajay Kota Steel uh, they, uh, they won't be very excited or take it seriously. But then this is a step in the right direction. Uh, the president is working. He's in India and uh, seeking to get investment into the country. However, you know, 10 countries have been listed in Africa uh, to have, you know, with, in, with regards to FDI, and Nigeria is not on that list. Uh, 10 countries doing well, uh, but Nigeria is not on that list. Uh, hopefully, by the time um, this year is over, by the time we're looking at the first quarter of 2024, Nigeria would have joined that list of the top countries in Africa who, in, who are doing well with regards to foreign direct investment. Well, those are top trending this morning on The Breakfast. Just stay with us. We'll come back in a moment with the front pages of the national dailies, some of them. You may want to know what stories made it to the front pages. Stay with us, we'll be joined by our guest who'll be analyzing this front pages.